All right, what's up guys? Today we're going to be going over how to set up an open VPN server on your Synology NAS, as well as have everybody connect back to it. This video is going to be a full workflow for either businesses or home use. Basically what we're using this open VPN server for is to connect a bunch of remote clients back to whatever local network you're running your Synology on. For business use, this is great. It allows for employees to connect back remotely and basically access all the resources that are on your local network securely and encrypted. This means employees who are working from home can even remote desktop back into their work computers to keep working as usual. It's also great for connecting back to the file station on the Synology. Employees can VPN back into the network and then access the file server from the Synology as if they were doing it at work. This setup can also be used to create secure remote backups. I've actually got a tutorial on how to set up a $35 Raspberry Pi as a remote backup for your Synology server. Basically, you set up that configuration and then VPN back into your home network as I'm about to show you here. And you can have your Raspberry Pi back up your entire Synology every single night. That means if something happens like fire or water damage to your main NAS, all of your critical files can easily be recovered from that backup. For home use, this has the added benefit of allowing you to do things like create a Minecraft server and have your friends connect into it. By doing this over VPN, you can securely allow your friends access to your Minecraft server and have them play on it with you without exposing ports to the internet unnecessarily. Finally, it's great for travel. You can VPN back into your home network and grab any files you need off of it. One of the best things of having a Synology NAS is not only having local access to it on your network, but having remote access to it when you need it. All right, so for this tutorial, I'm starting with a complete bare bones installation of DSM. So anyone should be able to do this. One requirement of the setup is you've got to be able to enable port forwarding on your router. This is the only way to have clients connecting from the internet to your home network, know where your VPN server is. So if you cannot do this, you're going to be unable to create a VPN server, unfortunately. However, if you just need a file server, you can use Synology Quick Connect if you need to. All right, so to start, we're gonna go ahead and log into DSM and we're gonna start by installing Synology VPN server. So log into DSM and go to Package Center and all we have to do is scroll down to VPN server. And it's right here, just click install. All right, so once it's installed, all you have to do is click open on it. And right here we get a dashboard of all the statuses of all the different types of VPN configurations we can set up. And so we're gonna go down and we're gonna set up an open VPN server. All right. And so setting up an open VPN server is super easy. All you have to do is click enable open VPN server and select the applicable settings. The maximum connection number is the maximum amount of clients who can connect to the server at any given time. This can be really helpful to make sure too many people are not trying to connect all at the same time and bogging down your system. Then for port, note this port default is 1194 for OpenVPN. And we're gonna leave the rest of these default, except for this, if you would like true remote management, is allow clients to access server LAN. You enable that to get the VPN benefits that we're looking for, is to basically be able to connect to any other remote servers on your network. And all you have to do is click apply. All right, and so now it's telling us to make sure to go ahead and open up port 1194 on our router. So let's go about doing that. We'll just close out of this and we'll go into control panel. Go to advanced mode and then we're going to go down to external access. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and set up is our router configuration and we're just going to click set up router. This is going to go through and have our Synology talk to our router and figure out how to set up port forwarding on the router without even having to log into the router ourselves. 
So if it passes the universal plug and play requirements, that means that the Synology will be able to set up port forwarding rules for itself, meaning we don't have to do anything. And so we're just going to hit apply. All right. And so now we're going to set up port forwarding by hitting create and we'll just go and do a custom port. So right here, you can choose the protocol, either TCP or UDP. We're using a UDP VPN server, so we're going to select UDP. We'll say the local port, 1194, and the router port, 1194. And just hit apply. And now if we click save and OK, it's going to go through and update your router settings and forward that port on. All right, and so now this connection came back OK, meaning the port was successfully forwarded. All right, so this next step we're going to do is for people who do not have static IP addresses from their ISPs, which are most people, unless you own a business with a given IP address. So you just go into DDNS, and we're going to basically create our own static IP address using Synology's tools. And just hit Add. Under Service Provider, select Synology and create a host name. It's going to make you choose an account, so I'm not going to go through this. But say you wanted to do spacerex at synology.me. You go through these settings and enable it. And basically, your Synology DSM will communicate with the Synology servers outside of your network. And every few minutes, your Synology will tell the external server what the IP address of your home network is. Then anytime somebody enters the IP address spacerex.synology.me, it will go to the Synology server, and the Synology server will point you to your home IP address. That way, you basically get a static IP address without having to pay for one. I would highly recommend doing this because it simplifies everything, so every time your IP address changes, you don't have to set up a new VPN connection. And the final thing we want to do is under network, we want to enable a static IP address on our local network for our Synology. So that way we can point traffic to it properly. And I'll get into why we're doing this a little bit later, but just go into network, network interface, and under your LAN hit edit and set up a manual configuration. So this is an IP address. You want to make sure your router is set up not to give out using DHCP. The way I've set up my router to give out IP addresses is to give out the IP addresses 192.168.1. blank 2 through 100. Then I manually set up all the other IP addresses for myself. This is important because if your router gives out the IP address that you've got set up here, your Synology will not be able to connect back. So make sure to set up this on your router, or if you really just want a very basic configuration, leave this as DHCP. But I'm gonna set this to 109. And just hit okay. So as we can see here, it looks like my DSM is frozen, but that's just because it's currently trying to go to 192.168.1.63 which is no longer the DSM's IP address. So now we're just going to enter that new IP address. And as we can see here, it successfully is logged in. That means every single time you connect to 192.168.1.109, it will always take you to your homepage. All right, and so now the next thing we're going to want to do in Synology is actually to set up all the users who are going to be connecting back over OpenVPN. So just go into user, and just say create. So let's say Bill wants to connect back. And we'll just give him a random password. Just go through all the regular settings. And so now we've just created this new user, Bill. And so we're going to make sure that Bill has permission to use OpenVPN. So we're going to go into a VPN server, privilege, and make sure Bill has access to OpenVPN. All right, now we're going to need a certificate for Bill. So we're going to go into OpenVPN and scroll down to Export Configuration. Click that, and it's going to go ahead and download this configuration file. 
And now you're going to have to get this configuration file on every single computer you would like to be able to VPN back into your network. This should not be hard. It's a very small text file and you can email it if you need to. And so that's what we're going to be using to authenticate. All right. And so now there's one additional configuration that's optional. This is for people who would like to be able to connect from a local machine on the network to a machine that is VPN in. An example of this is if you've got a backup server connected over the VPN, you would like to be able to connect to it from your local machine and make sure it's running. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to note what the dynamic IP address is. So this is the IP address our Synology is going to be giving all the VPN clients who are connecting. It's the 10.8.0 domain. So we're going to set up forwarding for the 10.8.0 domain. So any traffic going to that is forwarded to the Synology DSM, which it knows to forward that traffic on to whatever IP address is given there. Because otherwise, your router does not know about this 10.8.0 domain at all. And so it will return back an error and not be able to point users in the correct direction. So to do this, you've got to log into your router. And I've got a Synology router here. And we're going to be setting up what's called an IP routing table. So I'm going to go into Network Center, Local Network, and Static Route. I'm going to click Create. So basically, Network Destination is that subnet that we saw earlier, which is 10.8.0. Oh, we'll do zero. And then the net mask is 255.255.255.0. And the gateway is that IP address of our Synology that we just set up, which is 192.168.1.109. And then we're going to set the interface to be a LAN interface. And so now we can just go ahead and create it. And so now my router knows that this 10.8.0 domain exists. And the way to get there is to go through the Synology DSM. So it knows anytime it gets a request that's 10.8.0.whatever to pass that to 192.168.1.109, which is my Synology's IP address. Then the open VPN server will then be able to direct that traffic down the correct VPN. And you'll be able to SSH from your local network to a remote computer. All right, and so now for all the machines you would like to be able to remotely connect back to your network with, we're going to go ahead and install OpenVPN clients on them. The last time I did an OpenVPN tutorial, I had a ton of trouble with OpenVPN Connect. However, they recently just released a beta that has solved all of my problems with the software. So OpenVPN Connect is completely stable on Windows, but for Mac, I would recommend using the 3.1.1 beta as it's worked perfectly for me. On Windows, you can just install the regular version as I've heard it works perfectly fine. And then on Linux, you can just use whatever package manager you're using and use that to download OpenVPN. All right, and so first off, just go ahead and download and install the OpenVPN Connect software I've got a link in the description to it. And then also on all the computers you're gonna be using, go ahead and load that credentials file that we downloaded from the OpenVPN server on Synology. All right, and so once you've loaded that OpenVPN config file on your computer, go ahead and open it with a text editor because we've gotta change one thing. We're going to change this section that says remote your server IP to whatever address we set up earlier in DSM. That is the spacerex.synology.me that is going to forward all that traffic to the IP address of your house. Or if you own a static IP address, you can just enter that in here. All right, and so once you've typed in that IP address, just go ahead and save it. I'll go ahead and enter my real one now so y'all can't see it. And now open up the OpenVPN software. And all we have to do is drag in this OpenVPN config file in there. And this top part right here will be locked, but it should say whatever IP address you just entered in there, or the Synology.me address 
that forwards to your IP address. And then just give it a name and your username. So this is gonna be Bill, who we just set up that user. And we'll type in his password. All right, and now all we have to do is click save. And it's gonna save it. All right, and so now to show that this works, I'm gonna go ahead and get off my local network because obviously I can still connect through my local network and I'm gonna hook up to my phone's hotspot. All right, and so right now I am not on my home network. So let's just say I wanna to connect to my server. And so I'm gonna do SMB 192.168.1.110 and I'm gonna click connect. And it's just gonna spin and not connect because I am not on my local network. I'm on the internet. So now we're gonna go ahead and enable the OpenVPN Connect. And it's gonna give this error, missing external certificate. Since we've created our own OpenVPN profile, we do not need one, so just click continue. And right here, you should see connection status good. And so now let's try the same thing. And as we can see right here, it is successfully loaded. Though note, since I am over my phone's connection, it's gonna be slow. And we can also do other things here. We can also go in and let's load up Minecraft. And I'm gonna to connect to that multiplayer account that I've got hooked up at my home network. Connect to it. And boom, just like that, I'm playing remotely on this Minecraft server. And it's actually got surprisingly good performance considering how this is going through my phone's hotspot. All right, and so now, say you want to be able to connect back and remotely manage the computer that is remotely connected. So if we look in this OpenVPN profile, we can see right here that my private IP address is 10.8.0.6. All right, and so to see if we can remotely SSH into my laptop, which is being hotspotted on my phone, we're going to go on my local computer here and we're going to try to SSH into it. And as we can see here, I was successfully able to SSH into my MacBook Pro from my desktop computer. This means I can remotely manage everything over the VPN without having to be there. All right. And I think that should cover everything for using an open VPN server on a Synology NAS to allow users to connect back remotely to whatever network your Synology is on. This allows you to interface with any of these computers as if they were locally connected to your network. And it has the added benefit of securely encrypting all traffic from those connections back to a known network. This means that you're not exposing ports unnecessarily on the internet. And if you're traveling and very worried about a man in the middle attack, you can connect back to your home network and route all of your traffic through that. And so any man in the middle attack will fail. All right, well, I think that sums it up. Let me know any other questions you've got in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.